What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 news. And of course, it's been a pretty busy first day so far in the Bungie 30th Anniversary event. And in this video, we're going to jump in, talk about some issues with content, drops in the dungeon, disabled exotics and things to be aware of in the new content. Additionally, we are going to get a new Witch Queen trailer this week, which is pretty exciting. And so we'll round up that as well as some other updates from Bungie, and then a bunch of 30th Anniversary content, including upcoming stuff secret rewards, collectibles, and much more. So plenty to talk about in the video, but firstly guys, this video is sponsored by Raycon, and Raycon produce a collection of awesome yet reasonably priced wireless earbuds, and they recently sent me some of their everyday earbuds. I listen to a lot of music and I've been wearing these daily whether I'm working out or working on videos, and the audio quality is fantastic whether it's music, podcasts, or YouTube, so they also make for a pretty good gift. Visually they're really smart, coming in five different colours and an oiled rubber style. Plus they offer eight hours of playtime on a single charge with a 32 hour battery life, so they go for quite some time. They also have switchable gel tips to suit your ears so they won't drop out like some other earbuds do, and they've got a mic so you can take calls. And even better, they start at half the price of other premium audio brands, and orders get free shipping and returns, which again is awesome if you're buying them as a present. So if you're interested in picking some up, right now if you go to buyraycon.com forward slash houndish and use code HOLIDAY you can get 15% off across the entire site, which is also linked in the description box below. Orders support me here on the channel, so if you like the look of them, be sure to check them out with the details in the description. But now as we get into the contents of the video today, initially let's speak about a tweet from DMG where he said due to an issue, rewards from the Grasp of Avarice dungeon may only be looted once per character per reset, and we're planning a hotfix for next week to let players earn rewards upon each successful encounter completion, no matter how many times it's been played in a given week. So actually the intention for this dungeon is for it to be incredibly farmable with no loot lockouts. Currently that isn't the case due to a bug according to Bungie, but by next week we are going to be able to do multiple runs of that and get rewards, so that's pretty awesome, and we'll have to look out for that update. A couple of other things from Bungie help though, and they said due to an issue where the Forerunner exotic sidearm could get free ammo, we've disabled the Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves exotic hunter gauntlets in all activities. So that was the first bugged exotic, and then they also tweeted that due to an issue with cooldowns on the Icefall Mantle Overshield, we've disabled the Titan exotic in all activities. So if you can't equip those, that'll be why. And I'm sure there will be other things that Bungie will keep us updated on over the next few days, but... Moving away from the 30th anniversary for just a moment, Jeff Keighley, who's currently running the Game Awards, said, We'll get a new look at Destiny 2 The Witch Queen in an all-new trailer debuting live at the Game Awards, and this will be on Thursday, live at 7.30pm Eastern Time, which is 4.30pm Pacific Time. And they're going to be streaming that on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and more. And so on top of the 30th content we've had this week, we're even going to get some new Witch Queen hype, which is pretty awesome. Up next, let's speak about some content stuff in this new release though, and of course we have the Forerunner Exotic Sidearm. We spoke about this thing yesterday, it's pretty awesome. And there's also going to be a catalyst for the weapon, and it comes with a perk called The Rock, and for several seconds after a final blow, there'll be an alternate weapon action to consume part of your ammo reserves, converting your next thrown grenade into a fragmentation grenade, which of course is what we saw in the trailer. But to get the catalyst, there appears to be a quest to obtain it, which references finding an anomalous weapon part and returning it to Banshee. And if we take a look in Zer's inventory at the moment, he's got an item called an anomalous access card, which is unlocked at rank 16, which given the name seems to be linked to the quest for the catalyst. Once we have the quest, we need to complete the Dares of Eternity and get a fantastic score in order to earn the missing part of Forerunner, and then we simply return that weapon part back to Banshee to install it on the weapon. And then for Galahorn, of course, it's earned via the dungeon, and so is its catalyst. So once you have the weapon, the catalyst drops by opening three chests in the dungeon that use the Burdened by Riches debuff. Pretty easy to get done once you've done that initial run of the dungeon, and if you need a guide for how to unlock it, I'll link it down below. But the Galahorn Catalyst grants more wolves with increased magazine size, and final blows with wolf pack rounds spawn a faster, more powerful missile at the target's location. So it's a pretty fun catalyst for that weapon. And naturally there are more secrets hidden in the dungeon, including 12 hidden messages from Wilhelm 7, the guardian that we've been tracking in the dungeon. And if you access all of the voice messages, it unlocks the richest dead man alive triumph, which also grants access to a special Galahorn ornament in Zer's inventory, which we can see right here is pretty cool. 
Zer's inventory also lists some additional drops that we can target, like a Fearful Symmetry, which is the 30th Anniversary Helmet Ornament, and this requires the completion of the 30th Anniversary Seal. And that's the Vidmaster title, which is an interesting reference. A couple of other interesting loot things include some celebration weapon mods like Sweaty Confetti. These are consumable mods that come in stacks, but it causes a festive celebration on each precision final blow, which is a shout back to the Grunt Birthday Party Skull in Halo. And we can see that confetti explosion on precision hits there, which is pretty cool. Another quick treasure hoard shout, but if you're curious about where we could get the marathon armor ornaments, they actually come from the armor chests inside of the treasure hoard. And to get access to these, we need to level up at Zer first. And then there are other hidden rewards, like the Unisersal Voyager, a Zer exotic ship. We don't have extra details on how it's acquired just yet, but it's found via Zer's treasure hoard in eternity. And otherwise, in the 30th anniversary so far, we're getting showered by loot. And the fortunate thing is that free-to-play folks also get access to a lot of stuff via the Dares of Eternity. Some of the weapons here are absolutely awesome, and I'll be speaking more about the rewards in an upcoming video, so stay tuned to the channel. I think the final thing to mention in this video is that Bungie released a massive list of patch notes for the update yesterday. That includes all of the ability tuning, exotic and weapon tuning, but a new thing that they added are charts for grenade cooldowns. So there's a breakdown of how the cooldowns work after the update for all different grenade types. So you've got void grenades and a couple of examples include the scatter grenade and the new cooldown duration at a tier 3 discipline stat will be 105 where it was previously 82, but we can see they've also increased damage versus PvE combatants by 15%. Then for the Axiom Bolt, the new cooldown duration is 91 seconds, where it was previously 82, and they've increased PvE combatant damage by 15%, increased Bolt tracking by 33%, increased Bolt movement speed by 10%, and the travel distance by 15%. And then for arc grenades, for example, the lightning grenade now has a cooldown of 121 seconds where it was previously 82, but they've increased damage on PvE combatants by 23%, increased the minimum damage versus players from 50 to 60, and increased the maximum damage versus players from 150 to 160. Then for solar grenades and the fusion grenade, it now has a cooldown of 73 seconds, its previous cooldown was 82 seconds, and they've increased damage versus PvE combatants by 15%, reduced damage from players from 150 to 130, but they will now stick to all surfaces and have reduced the tracking strength by 25%. And so it is a very mixed bag of changes. And finally, there are the stasis grenades as well. And you can see those new cooldowns on the screen. So if you want to check that in-depth breakdown of all of the new cooldown timers for grenades, I'll link the patch notes down below. And for today, guys, that is what we have to round up in the video. Once again, I'll be keeping you posted on a whole bunch of other stuff over the next couple of days. So if you are new to the channel, definitely get subscribed and turn on notifications. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in today. If you've enjoyed the video, a rating below really does help us out. But otherwise, for now, guys, enjoy the new content. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. And I hope you all have an awesome day.